Hi, Rehab United. Uh, this is Grant Garcia, one of the sports uh, knee and shoulder surgeons here at Orthopedic Specialist of Seattle. Um, today we're gonna do a video blog for you guys and um, all of your uh, viewers, etc. So you can learn a little bit more about, um, we're gonna do ACL tears. Uh, so the ACL is probably the most commonly torn ligament in the knee that we see. Um, usually happens in athletes, but it can happen in all different levels of competition or random daily life from people falling on the sidewalk to someone twisting their knee uh, and getting tangled up in something random. Um, but that being said, we see a lot of ACL tears. Uh, and when we see a tear, it's kind of important for us to evaluate a bunch of different things. So first off, how do you know if you have an ACL tear? In general, people tend to complain of something called instability. So their knee feels like it slips out of place because the ACL is one of the strong ligaments that prevents your knee from slipping out of place, ma mainly from slipping sort of forward to backward. And so when you have that, tear, you're not able to stabilize your knee, and people say they feel like it gives way, etc. Now, not every patient feels like that. So there's two types of patients. There's really the patients that are compensators and non-compensators. Because I'm an orthopedic surgeon, I tend to see more of the compensators, but there are these people that can have ACL tears and don't really notice that. That being said, it doesn't mean they don't need something surgical. It's just we usually see the patients that come in because they feel unstable and they want to have an MRI done. So that's the most common one. Um, and that's the most common complaint. Now, other complaints that we can see are pain, locking, catching. When they have that, I get a little bit worried that they have more damage than just an ACL tear, and we'll get into that in a minute. So let's say you're someone that has that instability, and you go to see the doctor, what are we looking for? So we do a, a number of different exam things before we get a uh, MRI. We usually do an X-ray to make sure the bones look good. In general, younger patients get this, they tend not to have injuries of their bone for the most part. So usually that's negative, but that rules out any fractures. And then we do an exam. So we do an exam, we do a Lockman test. We're testing to see if that ACL is still holding the knee back. We can do something called a pivot. It's a little bit harder to do. This is a little more of an advanced technique, um, but we try to shift the knee out and basically uh, see if the knee is going to do some buckling. And that's that sensation that patients usually feel. And then we'll test for the other ligaments around the knee because their most ACL tears are usually in isolation or with a meniscus or MCL injury but we can have larger injuries uh, that are associated with other ligament damage that we wanna make sure we're looking for. And we'll talk about that another time. Um, but basically, once we do that exam findings, if I feel like there's concern for an ACL tear, then, um, and they're stiff, we'll start off with prehab or doing rehabilitation, hopefully at Rehab United. Um, and then um, we do rehab, but at the same time, we usually get an MRI. If the MRI shows an ACL tear and the patient's young and active, we, try, we usually consider doing surgery. And the main reason to do something surgical for a lot of younger ACL patients, especially those that are uncompensated, is that the more times they pivot, the higher chance they have of arthritis. The more times they pivot, the higher chance they have of meniscus tears. And the more times they pivot, the higher chance they have of cartilage damage. Thankfully, a majority of the patients that I see in my office, we get them, get them early enough where they're not compensated and they haven't damaged other parts of their knee. And so we're able to just do that ACL. But there are times when I see patients that have had delayed surgeries or delayed it because they were concerned or they didn't realize their knee or they went from a compensated to an uncompensated patient. And in those cases, they have other damage to their meniscus and cartilage. The outcomes are good, but just not as good as someone with that isolated tear or a small meniscus tear. So let's say we've gone through this whole process. The MRI shows an ACL tear. Patients are usually pretty nervous. And so the discussion next is talking about surgery. So the reason, again, I mentioned to stabilize the knee is so that we give you a new ACL so it's stronger and so you can go back to doing the activities you wanna do without shifting out of place and causing those other things to be damaged such as the meniscus or the cartilage. So the reconstruction, there's different options and different grafts. Um, here at Orthopedic Specialist Seattle, we do all the graft options, um, but there's quad tendon. And we won't go into this in too much detail. There's hamstring tendon and patella tendon. Generally, these three are used for patients under 35 years old. And then above 35 years old, we usually consider doing a cadaver graft, but it kind of depends on the person, patient, and activity level. So I try to customize the approach based off the patient. Once you decide to have your ACL reconstruction, um, we talk about looking at meniscus. If there's meniscus damage, a key, again, newer thinking is we try to save as much meniscus as possible. So we're always trying to do repairs if possible of the meniscus themselves or root tears, et cetera. Um, so we usually do this at the same time as an outpatient at the surgery center. Um, and usually people get a block too, and patients do well. We've got high satisfaction rates and high return to sport. Uh, and the recovery is usually this. Let's say there's meniscus or no meniscus, so it may be a crutches for a couple weeks if there's meniscus tears. If it's just the ACL in isolation, usually they walk out of the surgery center. Usually I say goal is biking by six weeks, three months running, four and a half months pivoting, 
and sort of return to spore can be anywhere from that six month to that you know nine ten month mark and it kind of depends on the age and activity level of patients and we've seen more recently that you know their younger patients under 40 really there's a strong indication to do this surgery but we have more and more patients especially in the seattle area and the washington area that are so active that continue to pivot out of place and have really good looking knees and so those patients still can be indicated for um, aca reconstruction so i really don't have an age limit on who i do it on as long as it's the right patient and the right indications um, after that sort of recovery it's again you want to do a lot of physical therapy uh, with you know hopefully rehab united and the goal at the end is to do functional sports testing so if you pass the test and you have around 90 percent of the non-operative extremity and you've done these special hop tests that they do at these physical therapy places um, then you pass that and you can go back to all your sports so hopefully this is informative sorry it was long-winded but at least we gave you the good information from sort of that initial concern and that injury how we test it imaging we get and then the surgical outcome and the progress um, Hopefully we can see you sometime. If you have anybody you need that needs to be evaluated, let us know. Um, and good luck with everything. And I uh, hope you enjoy your time with Rehab United. Take care.